guys, welcome back to another episode of Dinner with Danny, Cooking for Beginners. This is the show for those of you who think you can't cook. But believe me, I used to make nothing but shake and bake, so if I can cook, you can cook. Alright, today we are going to make pizza on the grill. <laughs> Oh, and don't forget, every time I say okay, you need to take a drink. I say okay a lot. Uh, we're going to make two different kinds of pizza, uh, and you can put whatever you want on yours, but um, I'm going to show you two of our favorites. It's all about how you do the dough on the grill. I mean, toppings, you know, you can put ham and pineapple, or you can put whatever you want. Okay? Um, but two of my favorites. Uh, my husband's favorite is... Barbecue pizza with cheddar cheese and red onion. And my favorite is goat cheese, roasted red pepper, uh, and red onion. And I'm going to put a little bit of uh, mozzarella cheese in that too. Oh, and we're going to have chicken on both of these. So, so just salt and pepper. Uh, we were, happen to be marinating them in uh, Italian dressing because we like to do that. But I'm going to put these on the grill first. And then uh, while they're grilling, we'll work on our roasted red pepper. So I'm gonna show you how to roast a red pepper on the stove, if you have a gas range, and peel the skin off. It's gonna be beautiful, juicy, amazing. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it right on the burner of the stove. And the flame is gonna just come up and sear the the skin of it, you want the skin to get nice and black. And then turn it so that side gets black. Turn it, because when it gets nice and black, and like it's burnt, and it will smell a little burnt, we'll put it in the fridge, let it cool, and you can peel the skin right off. It's amazing. I'm gonna put this on the back burner, which is a small burner. I'm just gonna put it right like that. And it's small so that the flame is more concentrated. If I put it on the bigger burner, it would be kind of around it. I want it right on the pepper. And we'll let it sit there. Okay, so my chicken's done. I pulled it off the grill. It's got some nice grill marks on it. I'm going to let it cool a little bit before I start slicing it. I'm just going to slice it into little strips um, so you can put it on the uh, pizza and you can eat it. Uh, shut up, Barbara. Okay, let's check on our pepper. I can smell something. It smells like it's burning. Oh yeah, look at that. <clears throat> All right, let's try and get, turn that and try and get the other side. So I'm waiting on my pepper still. It's starting to get nice and black. Um, and then once that's set, we'll move on to our dough. All right, I'm letting it sit. This comes from the grocery store, um, either in the refrigerated section or the freezer section. So if it's frozen, let it thaw out. <clears throat> Um, this has been thawed, and I'm going to let it kind of come to room temperature so it gets kind of soft um, and it's easier to work with. And then we will show you how to deal with this. This is a lot. I'm going to cut it in half, make two kind of smaller, almost personal pan pizzas. Only not in a pan, in a grill. Yeah. Till later. Okay. So while my pepper's cooking and my chicken is cooling, I'm going to chop my onion. Uh, remember, put it in the freezer for about 10 minutes. It helps with the crying. Okay. I'm going to cut it lengthwise. I'll try to get all the dry skin off of it so it's not so slippery. Um, remember when you're buying an onion, you want one that has no smell and is dry. Otherwise, it's going to get Mushy. All right. Oh, look at that. That's pretty. So I'm going to just take this and I'm just going to slice it into these kind of semicircles. Um, fairly thin for my pizza. You can do it whatever way you want, though. It's your dinner. Remember, the outside layer is going to be either skin or it's going to be rubbery. I'm just going to get rid of that. And then I get rid of the core. Give me some of that. 
And I'll probably cut these in half. There you go. Sometimes it's easier if you separate them before you cut them. So you're not trying to pick at all these little pieces. Okay, so I've cut them into about, I don't know, inch and a half. You cut them as long as you want, but just remember when you're biting into your pizza, you don't want this big long string of onion. You know, so this you can handle. You just, just chomp away. Yeah, chomp away. Okay. All right, this is, looks like a lot of onion, but remember this is on, going on both pizzas. So I'm just gonna kind of set this aside and I'm not going to use all this chicken, but I will cut up a few of these and um, save the rest for snacking. Okay, I'm going to call it time of death. Oh, there we go. Shut that off. Now, I'm going to put this in a paper bag. Okay, so you just want to grab a small paper bag. Take your uh, red pepper in there with a set of tongs because it's going to be hot. Close up the bag nice and tight. I'm gonna put this in the fridge for about five or 10 minutes. So I've cut my chicken up into thin strips. It's gonna go on the pizza. Uh, again, you don't want a big hunk of chicken while you're trying to eat your pizza. This took about four minutes each side. And if it's a little underdone, that's fine because it's gonna cook more on the pizza. And you don't want raw chicken. But... So we have our chicken, we have our onions, our red peppers in the fridge and we can get started on our dough okay so I'm gonna flour my surface um, we've tried a bunch of different ways to do this I used to do it on the cutting board um, and then I thought I can just do it on the granite countertop and I used to clean off the countertop and just flour the countertop um, but then you have to transfer it to the grill so I found out the best way for me I have these great um, cookie sheets that don't have a lip on them. So I can do it right on here and then just slide it right onto the uh, grill. And that's, you can pick it up almost like a giant spatula too. So <clears throat> just going to do a little bit of flour. All right. So it doesn't stick. I'm going to cut this open. I uh, usually try and cut it open as much as I can. And this can be a bitch to work with, but if you cut a, a lot of it, cut, cut a lot of the plastic off, and you can do that, right? And I just kind of like, Pull it back and then let it hang. Now let gravity do its job. That's physics. It'll kind of reshape into a blob once it settles. All right. So I'm going to flour the top of it just a little so, so my hands don't stick to it now. There we go. Pat. See how big it is. All right. Now, like I said, this is for two pizzas, so I'm going to cut this in half. I'm going to cut this in half. My little little food scraper doubles as sort of a pizza cutter. So I'm just going to kind of cut it down the middle. This is going to be a giant pizza, and the the bigger it is, the harder it is to handle on the grill. So, and then. You each get your own individual pizza, whatever kind you want. Again, if you just want sauce and cheese, just do sauce and cheese. Remember, if you're gonna do jarred sauce, get Victoria's. Don't get the cheap stuff. Don't. No, it's so worth it, it's so good. Um, but now they're gonna be oblong like this. I might just cut the corners off a little bit. You know, kinda let this one reshape a little bit. I'm gonna work on this one. 
So you kind of want to just start pushing it down from the middle. So start squishing it. I usually kind of do this, try and get it even, especially now that it's a little oblong. You want to try to stretch it out a little bit. All right, push it out to the edge. If you're getting bubbles, try and get rid of the bubbles. Every time I do this, my husband's like, don't you want to roll that with a rolling pin? And every time I say, no, I don't. <laughs> um, I worked in a couple of pizza places over the years. Um, <clears throat> and this is just always, always how we did it. This is how we do it. Once it starts to get kind of flat, to make it bigger, you're going to pick it up. Hold it by the edges. And this is where you want to kind of move quickly because gravity is going to do its thing. Again, physics. And see how it's getting all oblong? So I'm going to hold it up this way a little bit longer. Or let gravity help me. You kind of want to work fast. If it gets thicker on one side, you can kind of hang out there a little bit until it stretches. Okay. And again, this does not have to be perfectly round. It's not going to be. Okay. So don't think you have to be like dominoes. Think of it like an artisan pizza, or like like Bertucci's. Bertucci's is like never ever round. It's always some weird shape. Um, so yeah, it's not going to be round. I gave up on that a long time ago. All right, it's going to be kind of round. So then I pick it up and put it over my two fists, and this can be a little scary because you don't want to rip it, and you're always going to be like, don't let it rip, don't let it rip. Kind of like let it hang the edges. Let's see that. Pick right there. Ah! Run away! Man down! Man down! Okay, this side's a little thick. Okay, we're going to have total oblong pizza here, but whatever. It's my show. All right. So, then you can try and stretch it a little bit. If you want to look like a pro, put on your two fists and you can try and twirl it, but it's not really round. I don't think it's going to work. Keep your fingers crossed. I can't cross mine. You go, woo, woo. Oh, I'm making a pizza. <laughs> well, I'm wearing my New York City apron because last time I went there, we stayed in Little Italy. Oh, and the food there was so good. Oh, my God. Can't wait to go back. Funny story, though. Every Italian restaurant has outdoor seating, but they're all like, had these hawkers outside going, oh, come on in. Fresh pasta. Oh, come on in. Get a special. Get the pizza. Get this, you know, veal power. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Every, it's like being accosted by all these people trying to make you come into their restaurant, right? And then we walked by, and there was this one woman, and she just quietly went, Pasta. Again, this is the shape of my pizza. Because I cut it in half, so that usually, if you use the whole thing, you'd get it a little more round. All right. So, you don't want it to get too thick, because then it's going to rip. You can hole in your pizza. Nobody wants a hole in their pizza. That's one less bite. All right. I think we're pretty good here. It's looking a little thin. You can almost see through that part, so I'm going to leave that alone. And that's about as big as I'm going to make it. And then I'm set it down. Bubbles. And once you put it back down, try to just push out the edges. It's going to try to shrink up a little bit. It does that when it's cold. Oh no, he didn't. <gasps> oh. Yes, he did. So I'm going to work on this other one. And then, um, We'll get going to the grill. All right. <clears throat> okay, so this one came out a little rounder. Um, <clears throat> let me put these aside for a minute. I'll luckily have two of these cookie sheets. <clears throat> now we're gonna deal with our roasted red pepper. I took it out of the fridge. Ooh. <laughs> it doesn't look very appetizing right now. But believe me, if you like roasted red peppers, this is going to be amazing. You'll be able to just pull the skin right off. 
You might not get all of it. You have a little charred taste, but you can always rinse it. Red pepper and red onion go really well together. And goat cheese and red pepper and red onion. Oh, if you like goat cheese, it's amazing. I mean, if you don't like goat cheese, whatever. But um, if you want to try it, just put a little bit on your pizza with um, this combination. It's so good. Okay, so I'm just going to cut the top off of that. I'm going to cut it this way. So I can take out the ribs and seeds. I hope this camera's getting it. Cut on both sides of the rib so we can get rid of that. And then cut them as big as you want. I cut them like, I don't know, one inch squares or so. All right, so these are gonna go my pizza with my goat cheese, and I'm gonna take half of these onions to go with it, and half of this chicken, and that's gonna be one pizza. <laughs> Small pizza is gonna have a lot of stuff on it. I always cook enough for an army. It's amazing, it's, yeah. Um, so my husband's gonna get the chicken, the onions, and the barbecue sauce, with the cheddar cheese. I'm going to chop up some fresh um, oregano too while and sprinkle that on top. It's pizza, you've got to have oregano. So next we want to make sure we have all our stuff ready. Our sauces, our cheeses, our toppings. Um, I'll probably put this on a paper plate and bring them out to the grill. Because uh, once it gets going, you want to kind of walk quick. quick quickly. I don't know, shut up. Shut up, Barbara. Shut up. Now that I have all my toppings chopped up and ready to go, I'm going to make my husband's pizza first. He's going to need barbecue sauce and cheddar. Oh, what a good combination. And then I'm going to put some uh, mozzarella on there too, just to make it stringy. It doesn't have a lot of flavor, but it's going to make it gooey. And then, of course, his chicken and uh, red onion. You could use regular onions, but I think red onion with the cheddar and the barbecue sauce is a really good combination. All right, so we're gonna take his pizza crust out to the grill and I'll show you how that works because it's all about how you do the dough on the grill. I mean, you can put any toppings you want, like I said. Okay, so we're out here at my grill, um, it's been heating up and now I'm putting it on medium. Uh, if you have one of these that you toast the buns on, you want to take that off. I forgot to do that. Take that off now. Put that aside. Because you're going to need this whole surface to get there. All right, now we're going to try and slide this pizza onto the grill without any issues. All right, seems like it's going to slide nicely. Ready? Fingers crossed. Oh, look at that. And you might have to put the edges a little bit, but it looks pretty good. All right. And then I'm going to sp spray this side a little bit. So when I flip it, that'll have some oil on it and get maybe crispy and it won't be so dry. All right. I'm going to put this on medium low. I'm going to cook one side. I'm going to flip it. And then we will uh, turn this off. Add all our toppings and cook the other side. Let's check on it in a few minutes. So if you don't have one of these big cookie sheets that doesn't have the lip on it, I mean, if it has a lip, there's no way you're gonna slide it onto the grill. Um, you could use uh, one of these pizza getter outers that they use to get the pizza out of the oven. Um, you can buy these at like Bed Bath & Beyond or in any department store in the houseware section. Um, or just use the biggest cutting board you can. Just make sure you have lots of flour so it can slide off. Um, I remember in the restaurants, they always put cornmeal down, and that was so it wouldn't stick. But, like, who has cornmeal in their house? And we're not cooking in a pan or in the oven, so shut up, Barbara. Uh, I've always used flour. It's fine. Just don't put too much, because when it... The bottom could get a little dry. All right, I'm gonna go check on my crust. 
Okay, so it's only been a couple minutes. I'm gonna check on my crust. It was one big bubble, so you can pop any bubbles that you see. And I sprayed it because you're gonna flip it. There we go. See how it's a little dry here? That's why you don't wanna to put too much um, flour on it. Okay, so once you flip it, now I'm gonna shut everything off. Okay, we're gonna shut everything off so we can kind of take our time with our toppings and not feel rushed um, and not burn your hands. So first is our sauce, and I'm using a ladle. This is what I learned in pizza school. No, when I worked in restaurants, so they lob it in the middle. No, I'll just do that. There we go. And then you just take the back of it and circle, 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 make it bigger, bigger, bigger. Oval, oval, oval. A lot of sauce. Next is the cheddar cheese. Don't be skimpy with the cheese. But I try to get the edges first. I just kind of go around the edges real so you can get it kind of neat. Right where you want it. Damn kids, get off my lawn. You hear them? I'm putting the Cheddar on first because the cheddar and the barbecue are such a good combination. I want them to be next to each other. And then I'll put the mozzarella on top just for stringiness. So it's ooey gooey chewy. Oh, there we go. See, now I can take my time. If this was on, we'd be hurry, 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 hurry. And the onions because they're going to take, they're raw and they're going to take a while. Think about it, if you ever get a barbecue chicken sandwich in a restaurant, um, there's always like cheddar cheese and red onion on it. So that's the kind of thing you want to do, it's like, if you like something at a restaurant, try and make it at home. You know, use the ingredients you like, don't use the ingredients you don't like. Okay, so now we're gonna turn it back on, but we're gonna put it on low. And the reason we're gonna cook it on low is because the onions need a little time to cook. And if you put this on medium or high, the bottom's gonna burn and before the onions are done cooking. So I'll cook it low and slow, cover it, and we'll check back on it. I'm going to turn it back on. Okay, so my husband's pizza is on the grill. Low and slow. Um, for my pizza, I'm going to use regular um, red sauce. Victoria's, it's the best. It's a little expensive, but it goes on sale. Mozzarella, so that's some gooeyness. And I love my goat cheese. And you can get it in this container if you can find it and it's already crumbled so it's like that like feta cheese or something um i used to get it and it came in this little kind of loaf like in a saran wrap kind of thing and you had to kind of scoop it out and it was like a paste and it was real bitch to work with so don't get that it's horrible and then i'm going to put on my roasted red peppers my chicken and my red onion so yummy, so yummy, so yummy. Um, so now while that's doing that, I'm going to take some of my fresh herbs from my herb garden. This is just oregano, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the, pull the top, I'm just going to pull down to get the leaves off. Okay. Hold on to this one. And there we go. You don't want the stems. Who wants to chew on a stick? All right. And then any of the little stems you can take off and then chop it up into little tiny pieces so we can sprinkle it on our pizza. And say, manja, manja. Pasta. Fresh herbs, like, are so amazing. I'll check on my pizza and then I'll come back and chop this up into little tiny pieces so we can sprinkle it. Okay, I'm going to check on this pizza. Oh, it looks good. Dark out here. Let's check the underside. 
Oh yeah, underside's looking done, so we are gonna see if we can just, you know what I'm gonna do? Use my cookie sheet like a big spatula. There we go. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see that outside, but whew. let's take a look underneath. Oh, not too bad. Wanna let that cool a little bit before we slice it? Fresh oregano. that cool so we can slice it up. He's going to love it. And then we're going to put the mild pizza on the grill. Same deal. Um, one side down on medium for a few minutes, two minutes. Flip it. Turn everything off. Toppings, sauce, cheese, goat cheese, red peppers, red onions, chicken, put it all on. And then put it back on low. Low and slow. But keep an eye on it. Um, cause on a grill, it can, it can get overdone really easily. Whew, I need a drink. Okay. So this is cooled for a few minutes. I'm going to cut into it. Get a pizza wheel if you don't have one. You can always use a knife, but. Tommy, pizza's done. Wonderful. <laughs> it's your favorite. Can't wait. Uh, let me just get a little shot of that. Let's get a piece on a paper plate. This is just pizza night, and we'll get two. Two for my husband. And I'm going to taste it too. Mmm. Oh my gosh, Adam. What do you think, Han? Excellent. <laughs> I'm going to turn out the pizza. Mmm, look at that. Let's let that sit for five minutes. I'm gonna put on low. Okay, so my pizza's done. It looks amazing. The goat cheese didn't melt as much as I thought it would, but it's nice when it gets melty, creamy. It's also cream cheese. Um, so, we're gonna sprinkle that with mushrooms. I used all my oregano on my husband's pizza, and I ain't got none. All right, I'm gonna let that cool a little bit. Look at the underside. Oh, beautiful. If you find that the underneath is cooking and it's like done and it's getting dark and the top stuff hasn't cooked yet, you can move it to the other part of the grill where, like if I have four burners, for instance, <clears throat> so I shut two of them off, I put it over there, left two of them on and shut the, um, cover so it still heats up but it's not heating from below it's just heating the whole thing and hopefully getting this goat cheese to melt a little bit so we're gonna cut that up and taste that yummy 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 it's my favorite yummy 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 it's my favorite I need a drink okay it's cool those couple minutes I can't wait anymore <laughs> This looks so good. I know I say that about everything I make. But that's why I wanted to do this show. Because I was like, who knew I could cook? And that's what I want for you guys. I want you guys to be like, 
Oh my god, I can cook. Yeah, I made a mess of that. <clears throat> Sometimes the messier it looks, the better it tastes. You know what I'm saying? Okay, let's try this. Mm. When you get that little bite of goat cheese, it's so good. The roast of the peppers. Mm. So even if you don't make this recipe, you can do roast red pepper for something else. I highly recommend doing this. This is so good. You will never go back to frozen pizza again if you can do this. It's all fresh ingredients. You put whatever you want on it. So yummy. You can make any combination you want. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you all for watching. Thank you to my subscribers. Make sure you subscribe and share and like and comment below. Let me know what you think. All right. Thanks for watching Dinner with Danny. And remember, if you don't eat, you'll die. Food for thought.